I just wanted to thank you guys who went over to my second channel, Sunscape, and got us over that 6K mortal plan. I dropped a video this morning for you guys. If you want to check it out, I'm going to leave a link to it in the description below and the top comment. But today, we are going to get into the finale of Goku Trains Call Leafla. Smash that like button and if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications that way you never miss a video. In the last chapter of Goku Trains Call Leafla, Gotenks and Kefla are versing each other in a all-out battle where Gotenks is bringing it over the top to try to take down Kefla with whatever moves and whatever distraction he can to get one up on her. But unfortunately, it does not work with Kefla and they end up fighting each other in a precarious situation where during a beam struggle, their fusions both give out. They go back to their normal forms and the beam struggle that was going on during this match ends up exploding in their faces and today we get to figure out exactly what ended up happening and if they made it out alive. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Khalifla is flying through the air very much alive but looking exhausted and she says wow you saved me and as you can see right here in the next panel it is Super Saiyan Blue Goku holding both Kale and Khalifla. Khalifla asks Goku, Goku are the other two okay and of course she's talking about Goten and Trunks who have shown her the valor of a fusion warrior and how powerful that fusion and the subsequent parts can be to the overall output of the battle power for this character and that's everything that she's learned from the beginning of fighting Gotenks and she completely undermined Goten and Trunks at the very start belittling them and just being really cocky but as the fight went on where she couldn't defeat him in her normal form with Kaba nothing worked until she fused herself and she has gotten a brand new respect for not only Gotenks but Goten and Trunks as well and Goku assures her that it's okay me and Vegeta pick both you guys up you guys are all safe nobody got hurt and as you can see that both Goku and Vegeta are both in Super Saiyan Blue the blast that exploded between a Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks and a Super Saiyan Kefla, the blast that exploded in the middle between these two characters was strong enough and was blinding enough with such speed that it took them going into Super Saiyan Blue to adequately get all four of them out of the blast radius because I would imagine that the subsequent parts of those fusions Goten, Trunks, Kill, and Khalifla, they probably wouldn't have survived the explosion because they were so close. Even though at the very last moment, Khalifla tried to shield Kefla, it wouldn't have done any good. And so it took a Super Saiyan Blue speed to save both of them from utter destruction. And I like that little touch that they had to go into that form to save them. As they all crowd back around the cliff, Piccolo is the first one to berate Goten and Trunks, telling them that he's proud of them for what they've achieved, but they went completely over the top and pushed the fusion beyond its limits, plus themselves, putting themselves in great danger, and now they are covered in wounds, and because of that, there is no Sensu Bean for them to heal themselves up, and that is their punishment. They're gonna have to ride out with those wounds. They both agree and Khalifa's a little lost with the uh, Senzu Bean talk because she has no idea what that is. Goten complains that he's tired, obviously they're probably exhausted from the fight that they just had. And Goku says that he's proud of both Goten and Trunks, they did the best that they could and they seemingly almost came out on top. So as for now they need to rest, but before they go Khalifa calls out Goten and Trunks getting their attention. And she smiles and says, let's fight again sometime. And that's when Goten and Trunks both agree, yes, but next time we'll win. And that is where Goku instant transmissions to take them home. Kaba says that Goten and Trunks are amazing. 
and Khalifa agrees. But it's a little surprise that Kaba's alive. She thought that he was actually dead, and Kaba's like, no, no, I, I'm alive, I'm good. Kale tries to get Khalifa's attention, and Khalifa's like, what's up? But Khalifa interjects and says, wait a minute, I have to thank you for bringing the Batara earrings to us because I had no idea that you were gonna come and we really needed them in the pinch. Thank you so much. And Kale is actually kind of curious as to why they were fighting the fusion of Goten and Trunks in the first place. Why were they fighting them? It didn't make any sense. And that's when we cut to Piccolo and Vegeta. And Piccolo tells Vegeta that the information that we have from Universe 6 is muddy at best. It's better to clear up the situation and get more of the truth. And that's when he says, why are Universe 6 warriors training in Universe 7? anyway and that is where the chapter leaves off guys so honestly i'm surprised that we haven't asked ourselves this question before like why is goku even training Khalifa? why is vegeta training kaba why are the universe six saiyans training in universe seven and it could be because i mean off the get i i thought that it was because they wanted to train that they wanted to, you know, get stronger, and because these are the strongest Saiyans in the multiverse, this is a great place to start. But somebody would have had to ferry them across the border from the universes for them to get the training that they need. And so Vados and Champa would have gotten involved in this. So what is their end game? Why do they want the Saiyans to get stronger? It can't just be like a humanitarian thing or a training thing. There has to be something in the background. That's what Piccolo is getting on. Why are they even here? Why are they training here? And it's something that I didn't even think about, but I'm glad that Piccolo is the one asking the important questions because it could be a situation that lends itself to a conspiracy. Like, are they trying to learn our techniques? Are they trying to, you know, get all our special abilities what is the situation what is champa trying to do anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you made it to this point in the video you are now part of the hashtag end of video squad thank you guys so much for all your support make sure to drop that comment with that hashtag for a chance to be featured in my next video today i'm going to be responding to thomas cope i watched beerus destroy his entire race by rising fist by the way it's really emotional i actually ended up covering that dragon ball fan manga from rising fist and it is one of my favorite ones and it kind of gives a little bit more evidence as to what the beerus race is all about and where beerus came from it still leaves that open-ended question of why is champa still around then but i love rising fist videos thank you so much for your comment this is going to be blackscape signing off take care guys Subscribe for more content.